Lord Wood of Anfield. My Lords, I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, uh, uh, food prices are driven by many factors, including agricultural and manufacturing costs. Uh, we take food insecurity seriously, monitoring household spending on food closely and working with industry to mitigate against any friction in the supply chain which may drive up prices. The government's aware, of course, that food price increases are playing a, a part in a wider rise in the cost of living. Uh, recent increases in energy prices, however, which are the predominant price uh, pressure on households, mean people have less money to spend on food prices, regardless of its price. <coughs> I thank the noble Lord for that answer. The recent Food Foundation report on food insecurity was truly alarming. Over 7 million adults, over 2.6 million children, and nearly half of families on universal credit have experienced food insecurity in recent months. The government has the free school meal scheme, the Healthy Start scheme, and the holiday activities and food programme to enable a very targeted way of providing a nutritional safety net for the children most in need. Can the government promise to increase funding to these targeted programmes to ensure that the shocking emergence of a generation of poorly fed, poorer children does not become an endemic part of our country? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I thank the Noble Lord for, for his, his comments, and he's right. Um, in tackling poverty in, in all forms uh, is a key priority for this and any government. The Chancellor recently announced a new £15 billion support package to help families with the cost of living, and that builds on measures worth uh, nearly £22 billion that the government has already announced, and that brings a total support for households this year to £37 billion, which will be targeted in any number of ways, but particularly designed to help those most vulnerable. Well, given the fact that our uh, food insecurity and level of self-sufficiency is lowest in fruit and vegetables, what progress has been made to issuing work permits for those to come and pick our fruit and vegetable season, which is just about a promise? Hmm. There's been a lot of talk about self-sufficiency, and, 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 and I looked into this um, uh, to see what changes there have been in, in recent years. And we do actually in the UK have a high degree of food security. We're largely self-sufficient in wheat production, uh, growing 88% of all the wheat that we need. We're 86% self-sufficient in beef, fully self-sufficient in milk, a liquid milk. We're, well, it's, I'm making a point which I hope is interesting. Uh, we're, uh, we, are, we produce more lamb than we consume. We're close to 100% self-sufficient in poultry. Uh, and the, the, the Ukraine situation has certainly added pressure, but, but our, our, our situation vis-a-vis uh, self-sufficiently has not altered measurably in the last 20 years. Oh my Lord. My Lord. The, um, two years ago, the government conducted an internal review of its own into the drivers of food bank use. Indeed, everyone in this house will agree that use has gone up. A commitment was given by the ministers at the DWP to publish this in 2020. And in February this year, in the other place, Jacob Rees-Mogg said that the further commitment would be given to publish this review this year. So the question is, where is it and when are we going to see it? Well, uh, the, the, I understand and, and the government uh, accepts the, the data limitations in monitoring um, food security. And, and from April of 2021, we introduced a set of questions into the Family Resources Survey to measure and track specifically food bank usage. Um, the first results of these questions are due to be published, I'm told, in March 2023, uh, subject to usual quality. The public are increasingly concerned about how they will feed themselves and their families. It is not just about reading the supermarket signs saying sunflower oil is replaced <coughs> by a similar equivalent oil in products. It is about the exponential rise in staple food product prices. A small bag of oranges used to be £1.20 for 10. This has now increased to three fruits for a pound. <laughs> Can the Minister say whether all government departments are working together to find his solutions, including DWP and the Treasury? Yeah, yeah. Shoot. Noble Baroness is right. Um, there have been year-on-year -year food price in inflation uh, rises from 6.7% in April, which is up from 59 percent in March. Um, she mentioned supermarkets, uh, and actually we, we, DEFRA has been engaging uh, uh, very, very regularly with the supermarkets, discussing the cost of uh, living issue uh, and the steps that, that they can take to help address those issues, and we'll continue to explore 
uh, a very wide range of measures that they can take to ensure the availability of affordable food, for example, by maintaining value ranges, price matching, price freezing measures, and so on. Uh, this is a priority for DEFRA, and of course, as she implies, this is a cross-cutting issue and departments are working together. My Lords, the, uh, the Dimbleby National Food Strategy Report was published in July 2021, which is nearly a year ago. It sets out recommendations on many of the food insecurity issues which we are raising here today. Given its significance, is the Minister embarrassed at how the length of time the Government have taken to respond to that report? Yeah. Well, so first of all, I'd like to acknowledge the, the work that went into that report. I think it was a brilliant piece of work, um, and I'm very grateful to the team uh, behind it, not least Mr Dimbleby himself. Um, I, I very much hope that the Government will provide a proper, comprehensive response to that report as soon as possible, as I know she does. My Lords, um, I'd like to quote from a government report that came out in July 2021, which reported that data shows that promotions of food in supermarkets increase consumer spending by encouraging people to buy more than they had intended to buy in the first place. In light of that, does the Noble Lord the Minister agree with me that it's time to stop these promotions as a part of the contribution to helping people to manage their food budgets more effectively. Yeah, yeah. Um, my Lords, I'm, I'm, I'm aware of the study that the Noble Lord cites. Um, I don't pretend to be an expert in this area. Um, but the government's view is that the proposed uh, uh, policy of, of, uh, uh, of, of inhibiting the, for example, buy one, get one free offers has been postponed in order to provide immediate uh, relief for those people facing acute uh, food insecurity uh, and food poverty. But the policy has not been uh, abandoned. It, it has simply been parked. Was the minister aware that recruiters are forced to go further and further afield in an effort to find pickers, even to Nepal and to the West Indies. And is this the result not only of the war in Ukraine, but also could have been foreseen as a result of Brexit? Um, the, the, there are, there are, uh, the, the Noble Lord um, makes an important point, and the department that I'm here representing today is working very closely with the Home Office to ensure that we do have the labour we need in order to pick and collect the food that's produced in this country. Is my noble friend aware that the families in the UK, the men and women who go shopping, are well able to make a judgment on their, on their own part and welcome promotions that reduce the price of the produce they want to buy? Yeah. Okay. The Noble Lord makes a, a, a good point, and I refer him to my previous answer. My Lords, I'm sure the Noble Lord, the Minister, is aware of the crisis in the supply of infant formula in the United States, which is associated with an extremely oligarchic concentration of production and ownership of supplies. What assessment has the government made of uh, similar risks to supplies of critical products in the UK? My Lord, the UK has a, has a resilient food supply chain, and, and actually the, the, it was the preparations that we were required to make in the event of a no-deal exit from the EU that, that ensured the UK made preparations that otherwise perhaps would not have been made. So in a, in, in a very real sense, the, 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 the possibility of, an, of a no-deal exit uh, led to an audit of our supply chains, uh, which has resulted in a much great more resilient system than we might otherwise have had. Reporting only 25% of seasonal workers have received their visas. Would the Minister have another attempt of answering the question from the Lady McIntosh of Pickering as to why there's a delay on the visas for seasonal workers? Referring to my previous answer, and that is that DEFRA is working very closely with the Home Office to ensure that we have the labour we need to collect the food that's grown in this country. Further, to, uh, further to, to, to that, what, what is the government doing in terms of increasing the number of people who are potentially available to work from the UK? The, uh, the importance of welfare to work schemes to bring people off inactive benefits in, in these circumstances has always been important in this country to reduce poverty. It is of particular importance now the EU labour market force has been reduced. <coughs> I mean, the, the, the Noble Lord makes an important point. There are many, many job vacancies, um, not least in, in the area that we're discussing. Um, and this is uh, an, an area of focus for DWP and indeed for Department for Environment, Food, Farming and Rural Affairs. 
The biggest cause of food insecurity at the family level is poverty. Some 22 million adults in the United Kingdom survive on annual income of less than £12,570. Would the Minister commit to giving an immediate increase of 15% to universal credit and state pension? If not, can he commit to living on £12,570 for a year? Yeah. Yeah. I can't uh, commit any such thing, but I can uh, reiterate that the Chancellor has brought to pull together a package amounting to £37 billion specifically to tackle the immediate uh, crisis in, 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 in cost of living faced by people in this country, and that money will go a very long way to alleviating the uh, uh, suffering of those people uh, at the bottom of the economic ladder in this country.